I, we know one of them was the Lord. The other one would have probably been the second. Well, one would, if, if one was the Lord, it would have had to have been the Lord Jesus Christ. Sure. That's what and that's what the Old Testament would have called a theophany. That is a pre-revelation of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. I just want to show, uh, in, verse, in, in chapter 18, I mean, and I just read the whole thing, but now that we know about the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's cool how you can go back to Genesis. It says, and I remember Jesus saying something in the gospel. He said, Abraham saw my day, you know. But, but anyway, uh, it says, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent of the in the in the tent door in the heat of day talking about abraham mm -hmm. and he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo three men stood by him so those three men i mean you said it could be that the, you know father. if you say the trinity but it wouldn't have been the father right because the one thing that jesus says in john no man has seen the mm -hmm. father mm -hmm. so one would have been the lord jesus christ mm -hmm. and the other ones could have been ministering angels that's what I, and as in, in reading this, that's what, that's the picture I got. Right. Because as you go down, it says, Abraham says, and my Lord, I mean, this is a, I mean, this is a good chapter because at the end he keeps saying, he says, now I won't ask you anything else after this, but, right. but, you know, and it was cool. And, and you can see the patience of, of, of the Lord. He yeah. just, he just lets him, yeah, like, okay, if, I, if it's that many. But anyway, he says, and the Lord appeared unto him um, and said, and he says, my Lord, if now if thou found favor, okay. So they, they came, um, let me see, what was that? And, he took the, and they said, or Sarah, Allah, Abraham, therefore. And it says, and the Lord, in verse 13, it says, and the Lord said unto Abraham. In other words, it seems like, you know, like as we know how Christ in his earthly ministry communed with Peter and the 12, mm -hmm. just talking to him like that. Exactly. I mean, Sarah talked to him, you know, he, she, he said, you laughed. She said, I didn't. Uh, and, and then verse 16 says, And the men ro ro rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham, verse 18, shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, verse 19. Now I like this. And, and, and what was important to the Lord was that Abraham will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the Lord and to do justice and, and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. And, and then you think about Joshua saying, as for me and my house. See, with God, it's the whole, you know, it's the man. And he, yeah, it's the family. He knew Abraham was the type of man who would, would instruct his children and on down through the, the generations, you know. That, was, that would have been his will to do that. And I see that's important. You brought it up talking about the fathers. That's very important in God's eye. In fact, that's why you're a father. Oh, God, you're a father. Scripture, mm -hmm. you see that time and time again, mm -hmm. that issue. Because of it. And there was another part. And men turn their faces from thence. And, and then, if you, like, Nicole, have you, have you read this part, this passage? I was coming in past. Yeah, it's but... good because uh, you'll see, what I saw was the, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird to see this interaction. The, 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 the patience of the Lord. He was on his way to destroy the city and Abraham kept saying, um, he says, now I won't say much after this, but if you find 50 righteous, he says, I won't destroy it for those. Um, how about 45? You know, it's kind of just working his way down until you got to, and it was, it was, it was nice. The, uh, you learn a little bit about intercessory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Intercession. Intercession. Intercessory prayer. Mm -hmm. Interceding on behalf of another. Supplication, intercession, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, these are illustrations. That's why when you get get over there in in the epistles, you know, in the gospels and the mm -hmm. epistles, they make statements, and they make these statements as if these are things you should know and understand. You know, when when Paul yeah. make those statements over there, he don't take the time to say, "Now let me explain to you what right. intercessory prayer is." Right. He just assumes you know, and the way he you would know or should know. This whatsoever things was written for time was written for our learning that we through patient and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And you learn from the examples of others. Abraham is an example here of, inter of intercessory prayer. Um, it doesn't mean that the intercessory prayer will result in the same way. 
uh, maybe as it did. And the, the, the point I'm trying to make is learning the principle of what intercession is, intercessory, interceding on behalf of another, going before the Lord, and you know, making your petitions or your requests known unto the Lord on behalf of another. So is that, that's that's what. How does intercession work with us in the dispensation? It would be prayer? it would be the same way. The end results, however, is how prayer works for us today, as opposed to how it worked in time past. See, in time past, they were in a covenant relationship yeah, that's right. that would that's right. that God had made certain promises and that he would do such and such, <laughs> yeah. you know. And so they were, based on the word, they could go to God and say, Lord, such and exactly. such, because God's word had said. Yeah. And so they can look to God to do based on what he said he would do in his you know, word. There's a, a verse that says, where God is speaking to, um, you know, Abraham and Sarah, Abraham had Sarah say that, you know, you're not my wife, you're my sister, because you, you're yeah. a good looking woman, and these guys are rich, these kings. And, uh, and the one king t tried to take a Sarah, mm -hmm. and then the Lord appeared to him. He says, uh, that's the man's wife there. The oh, yeah. And the guy came to Abraham like the people, like the guys came to Jonah, and they was like, hey, man, what are you doing? Don't, don't, don't get me involved. He says, why didn't you tell me? Right. And then, but God, what was important, God said, go, and Abraham will pray for you. He'll pray for you. You know. And, see, that's, that's cool. and, and God would... Uh, because what God was doing by that very act, and you see so much that people miss when they talk about these things, is that God was making Abraham the issue in, in the earth. And people had to know that. That's why God sent this guy to, God could have said, you know, the guy could have just, you know, the guy could have prayed to the Lord in the essence, but salvation is of who? The Jews. Of the Jews. And, and, and that was a showing, that's awesome, because yeah, that's showing that like when the Gentiles come through, through Israel, Israel yeah. To get the blessings of God, you know, they had to go through. Right. Okay. I mean, I mean, you see all that back mm -hmm. then. Sometimes we just gloss right over it. And you know, the Christendom at large just. Well, they missed, and, 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 that, and that's another point about rightly dividing, because as you learn Paul's revelation, then you can go back and see the things yeah. taking place, you know. I mean, way these back are things then. that you could have seen even yeah but they, yeah they just got in, so far off just in view of the fact that god says in thee shall all the earth be blessed you know right there in 18 he says shall all the earth be blessed so when this guy does what he does and then finds himself in trouble god tells him to go to abraham why didn't god just deal with the matter directly because abraham was god's man and god wanted the world to know abraham is my guy uh, same thing you, in the book of Acts. You see the attention that God gives to Paul. Why does God do that? Because he wants people to know Paul is my man. That's right. That's right. And, and see, I, I, but, but you brought up, you know, people don't do that now. Christian at large, it's the same with Paul, you know. Yeah. They don't give him. He's the apostle, the apostle to the Gentiles, the church, the body of Christ, and every His doctrine, what was committed to him, is for us. Mm -hmm. and, and people just dismiss it or just gloss over it or just, you know, mix it all in together with the rest. It's to us and about us. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Acts chapter 5. We haven't been back in the book of Acts for a while, and I do want to get through the book of Acts. This, this is one of my my goals, is to get through a book completely. <laughs> I'll start them, and then I won't finish them. I have one question, please. Yeah. When, 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 those, when there were prophets, like we, I talked about on Sunday, when, and, it, and maybe you can help me, it says, and when the word says, and the word of the Lord appeared unto, mm -hmm. what exactly is that? What does that mean? And the word of the Lord appeared unto. Uh, like I was Numbers, doing, 12. Uh, numbers 12. And verse 6. And you contrast that with verse 8. <laughs> so as we know, we now know that the Lord 
is the word. The Lord Jesus Christ is the word. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all the kind of power. Somebody had been cutting the lights off and on the mirror though. So interesting. What did that The Lord Jesus Christ appearing to him? No. No? No. Uh, like, the, like Numbers talks about that. Oh, okay. The word of the Lord comes to them in a vision or in a dream. Oh, so it's just, it comes to them in a dream and they just, right. okay. I mean, that's what people claim today, you know, God's word, God spoke to me. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Now, there's an answer to that, by the way. Okay, folks. Could uh, be some kid around, running loose. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I probably won't remember where the verse is right off the top of my head. It's in Jeremiah. Um, so that people, oh, uh, let's see, now that's not it. Uh, but this is a response to people who, who talk about God having spoke to them in a dream or having spoke to them in a vision when, you know, we know that that isn't the case today. But there's a, a passage in Jeremiah, I used to think it was in 16, but uh, I'm looking at 16 now, and don't see it, but, uh, okay, uh, 14, beginning at 13 and 14. Chapter 14, 13 and 14. Right. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 14, 13. Jeremiah 14, 13. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. And see, all this business about the Lord showed me this and the Lord showed me that, the Lord gave me this bit, that's all of their heart. It has nothing to do with God. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesied falsely in my name. And, you know, and people better be thankful that we do indeed live in a dispensation of grace. You know? <laughs> Because uh, with all the lies that folks tell on God today. Oh, well, it happened in time <laughs> past with that story I told you in Kings. This yeah. guy says, hey, an angel of the Lord appeared unto me and said, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. And it was a lie. It was a lie. And in fact, that brings us right in to where we are in Acts chapter 5. Thank you. That was you turning the lights on? Uh, okay. Yeah, we got a fuse out back there. Okay. I, I knew it had to be somebody back there messing with it. All right. How you? Messing with the lights. Okay, Acts chapter 5. Now we've been going through the book of Acts, and one of the things that we need to remember about any book is that you need to understand the design behind the book or why the book was written, the purpose of the book, the purpose of the author. And having that information, then you begin to look at the details or do your analysis of the book with that in mind. That is, when you begin to read, again, the best way I know how to illustrate it, you have a bird's eye view. And you just think of a forest that has a path, like a bike path, through it. Now, if you're up in a helicopter or a plane, and you look down, and you've got a thick forest, but you know, if you look down, sometimes if the forest has enough of a gap, you can see the, the trails, how they, you know, where they start, where, you know, where they go, and where they end up at. Now that's from up above. But then when you get down into the thick of things, you can't see but so far in front of you. And uh, you begin to go, you know, you begin to pursue this course, you begin to go down this path without a uh, a real clear, and without that bird's eye view, you really don't know, you know, how to assess things along the way. You know, the little guideposts, 
you don't know how to interpret those statements or those issues, those, those events that pop up along the way. But those events that pop up along the way are designed to be looked at with the overall purpose of the writer. 